Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's April 3rd, 2019. I'm over in the work area. And today's topic is about hardwood cuttings. Uh, Mary McAndrew had commented uh, or asked a question, do you have any more videos on the hardwood cutting uh, process that you do uh, after me posting a video showing uh, taking and transplanting some of our elderberry uh, hardwood cuttings that I'd done a year and a half ago and I had those planted in compost right up next I did the cuttings in compost right up against the workshop area and I never got to getting them out of the ground last year so this spring I took the mini excavator broke through the ice along the fence line because these elderberries are going to be one of the components of a living fence that we're creating near where the high tunnels going on top of the hugel culture and back to Eden area so uh, Mary asked geez, do you have any other videos? I sh shared a video that I'd done in the past, and it, when I went looking for videos on these propagation techniques, I saw that I really hadn't posted any about it. I know I've recorded things in the past, but the quality was such that I said, ah, don't even bother posting. So she really wants more instructional. So I've decided what I'm gonna do is do a whole propagation series using many of the different techniques that we use to produce many uh, clones of the plants that we find find most desirable. So today's topic is hardwood cutting. So today I went out th this morning before the big windstorm came. We got a big windstorm going on right now. That's why I'm inside and why I'm doing things the way I'm doing it now. But I went ahead and got some hibiscus hardwood cuttings, grapevine hardwood cuttings, elderberry hardwood cuttings, and mulberry hardwood cuttings. So when we say hardwood cuttings, what are we talking about? We're talking about a time of year and the age or maturation stage of the wood that we're actually selecting for hardwood cuttings. So when we're talking about hardwood cuttings as opposed to softwood cuttings, hardwood cuttings are taken during the dormant period, during the winter months, uh, when all the, when the deciduous leaves have all f fallen off after the first good hard frost, and that's when we're selecting our wood before those buds start to swell up and the the leaves or flowers start to emerge in the spring. So that's a time period. So around here, it's late November or December, January, February. Can do it in March. Here I am, April third, running around trying to get them before the buds start swelling up. We're in, is still in a bit of a cold spell today. It's warming up. It's going to get into the 40s today. The sun's out there, but the winds are real high. So we know the time of year. Now we want to get the uh, which, which limbs are the ones that we want to be selecting. We only want to use the wood that came from the, the, the most recent season. So now I'm actually in the beginning of, of 2019, in April right now. But after the, 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 the stems started to emerge last spring, that is the appropriate hardwood. So it doesn't have side branches coming off of that in most, most species. And that's the wood we want. It isn't, it's, it's often more flexible. So here's a mulberry. So it's more flexible, it won't snap. It doesn't have all the side branching off the sides as well and it's a it's a it's uh, it often has a different coloration it's a lighter color in most cases than the wood that's been on on the uh, on that tree or bush from this previous season now many bushes like your hibiscus they're going to grow up each season and shoot right up all the way up and you can take those right down to just above the ground level or sand cherries or many different uh, plants that really grow up and and create very very tall plants where there's rapid growth throughout the season with the mulberries they're they're pretty ex, uh, extensive as far as the amount of growth that they can put on in the season elderberries are really uh, so this is all growth from one season. Grapevines, they can be 12, 14 feet long, uh, the amount of new growth they put on in a season. So if you have friends or you have a favorite uh, bush or tree that you want, 
this is one of the, the, the techniques that can be used for a whole variety. Certainly like the real easy ones are elderberries and your ribes like your currants, your gooseberries, and that's your black currant, white currant, pink currant, uh, red currants, uh, and many other plants that are really easy. People talk about the mulberries being super easy. I can't say that I've experienced them being super easy, but they're pretty darn good. So now we want, so we know the time of year that we want to uh, to take the wood. We know which wood it has to be that previous season's first growth. Then we look at the wood, and and it's it's important to know a little bit about the anatomy. So sometimes you just have the scars that are left uh, on the wood. So. You know, there may be little bumps and that, those are nodes and those are leaf nodes and below it there may be a little v-shaped uh, uh, chevron like below it which is a leaf scar or a fruit scar in many cases um, but in these cases it's a leaf scar because we're only taking last season's growth so this is a node this is a node and this is a node hopefully these are these are showing up and this is the internodal area between nodes. So here's where, where two leaves were, here's where two leaves were, here's where two leaves are. And as we get closer up to the top or the, or the, or the distal point, the furthest out on, on the limb, the internode becomes shorter and the nodes become closer together. So when we're taking, the, taking a cutting, one, you certainly want to use very sharp uh, pruning uh, shears. And if you want to know more about how I sharpen these, I've made videos in the past, but uh, I have a nice tool that sharpens just about all of my farm tools really, really well. They need to be sharp and clean. And, uh, and I always have a bucket for all the cutting pieces that I've got as well. So it, with this one, I'm going to do a cutting now. When I cut this off of the elderberry plant, I cut just above the nodes that were there. So this internode is, I'm gonna call it a dead zone. Let me just cut it off. I'm always cut just the, at the base of the hard, hard root uh, cutting. You want the nodes to be, to cut right below that node. So I'm gonna go right over here and cut just below it. This is all an internodal area. It is an area of, uh, that, is, that has no ability to de-differentiate. It's alive and you may be able to see the green ring around it and that's a cambium layer. So that's a vascular, there's a xylem and phloem and then there's the pith on these and, uh, and I won't go into all the anatomy right now but uh, that's the vascular uh, tissue, and when you see that green ring just inside of the, uh, 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 on the, just within the inner surface of the outer bark, then you know that that's a viable stem that you have. So we just cut below this node. This node has the ability, so that's where the leaves will come out, that's where fruit, the, the little stem that will produce the fruit, the flowers, and the fruit ultimately. So that isn't differentiated yet, but it has the potential of becoming leaves and then fruit area. And it's a zone, it's a primordial root zone, if you will. So it's stem cells. And those stem cells, have uh, these cells have the ability to de-differentiate. Right now, it was programmed to send out leaves. These areas here won't, won't send out roots here because it's not in contact with soil. But because of being in contact with soil and moisture, these will de-differentiate. Instead of going out to becoming leaves and fruit, it's going to send out roots at this area. This area has, the inner nodal area, has no ability to send out nodes. Now, you'll see, in, and many YouTubers will talk about scratching off the area, scratching off the buds and all. I don't. I haven't has, had as much success when I scratch the area. And could there be uh, small little roots, these little uh, vascular areas, and you'll see little dots along many of the, of the stems, 
they potentially have some differentiating, uh, de-differentiating ability and can send out some roots, but it depends on how severely they're damaged. So I don't do that. I just cut just below the nodes. And so this part will go in the soil. Now, you could decide to propagate, uh, let's say somebody's uh, got a huge elderberry bush and you love elderberries, or you think, geez, I could grow these at home and sell them on eBay or whatever. Uh, so you might go to the store, go get some coarse sand, make a box out of two by fours in your, in your, in your yard, fill it, up, uh, fill it up with a couple of inches of coarse sand, and just stick the base of this just a couple of inches into that coarse sand and the roots will emerge in, over the season and the leaves will come out here in these two nodes here and you'll start to get new stems coming up and then you can pot up that plant and sell it or you can plant it in a different area on your property. Those are all possibilities. It's, it's a really nice way of propagating many different uh, hardwood cuttings. So, so there's a node here that I cut just below, a node here, and a node here. I'm going to be putting this over into one of my permanent raised beds. I'm not going to be growing quite as much vegetable uh, material as we've grown in the past, and I'm going to be growing more perennials in there, just trying to propagate more because the wildlife really eat a lot of these around here. So with this one here, if the nodal distance is such a big distance, I may only bury this down to here and let these two come up and be leaves. So I'll go just above this. So I'm going to set this over here to the side for a second. And I'm going to cut about one inch above the top node. So I just cut this one. I'm, the reason I set it in the bucket was so that I don't bang it or it doesn't hit the floor and damage the buds that are there. So there's... I have these nodes at the very base. I'm within a quarter of an inch of those nodes or a centimeter within there. I'll bury it all the way up to possibly this deep if I want to. These nodes here will be above the soil. They'll put out stems and these will put out stems. If I set this down and try to figure out, well, which way goes up or down, it's real easy, easy as long as I'm, I'm consistent with cutting it just below the node on the base that goes in the soil and I leave an inch or two above the top. This will die off, but the new stems will come up and we'll have two different uh, limbs coming up from this point and two, two more limbs going off in this direction. So we'll have this being a really well-balanced plant with opposing leaves and stems going this way and opposing leaves and stems going in this direction. I can take a hold of this top part, which is the remainder part of the internode, and use this to shove the, uh, the hardwood cutting into the soil. Because we're having a, rain uh, a windstorm going on outside right now, I'm not going to go out and put a string down and start putting these in the ground. I may make a video tomorrow if the weather's decent and actually show how I do that. Uh, the spacing is dependent. Now, if you were to do this and you wanted to do this and you didn't want to do containers like this, and I'll be doing fig trees and the rest of the things around here, you could use at a nursery. They'll be throwing away some of their old pots. If you bought trees in the past, save your old pots. They've got holes in the bottom. You could put sand first couple of inches in the bottom, put these in there. You could take these and bundle them up if, if you're doing this after things, if you don't live in an area like we have where we have so much snow, if you only get a, a few feet a year of snow, well then it's a piece of cake. You can use these buckets, do it outside, put a little bit of sand or soil in the base of it, bundle them up nice and snug together, put those in there, use wood chips to cover it up or leaf malt. You want to have some aeration or or perlite above it. Have to have the holes in the bottom so the water drains through. And then come spring, when everything starts to thaw, you can start planting them at that time. You can take them from their tight bundle. You don't want to leave them in their tight bundle 
throughout the spring and summer because the roots are going to get all intermeshed. They're going to be comp competing for the nutrients once the roots come out. You just won't have as much success. And remember, roots need air as well, and they're really close together. It's not as good for them. So I hope that all makes sense. Um, I guess because my videos tend to get pretty long, I think I'll stop right there. I plan on making several other videos, the softwood cuttings during the springtime using a misting system as well. Um, also talking about uh, doing some of the other techniques. Let's say you want to produce your several different apple trees or, or peach trees or plum trees. And you know, geez, you really want to have the trees be smaller and be dwarf or semi-dwarf size. Well, you can, can go to a nursery or order online some rootstock, plant that rootstock, and I'll show some techniques in future videos on how to actually do stool mound, uh, uh, stool propagation or mounding techniques to go ahead and get some plants to, as the, as the stem comes up and the side shoots come out and you mount, mount up the soil about, around that, each one of those stems can turn into a new rootstock. You can actually take plants like our various ribes, our gooseberries, our, our currants and all, and you can mound the soil up around those to, to get them to go. We can use serpentine techniques, and I'll do one with probably our hardy kiwis, where we take the vine as it starts growing up and we can lay it on the ground, put soil over some of the spots as, as the new uh, um, uh, buds start to emerge, and each one of them will send out roots as well, and so you can cut those sections up and propagate that way. Um, I know I'm air layering. I probably won't show, make a video on that unless I get better at that. I've, I've done it a couple of seasons, and I have less than a 50% success with that. Hardwood cuttings, probably a 90 or 80%. I don't use root hormones. Many people do. I have used root hormones in the past. If I had found them today, I would have shown uh, some of the uh, root hormones that I've used. Yes, we can make our own root hormones. I'll be uh, taking some of our willows, our variegated and our curly willows. If, if the buds don't emerge soon on there and I can get some more done and get them started to get potted up, I'll propagate more of those. I'll probably do more of our currants as well. Uh, what other techniques? I can't think of them right now, but there are several different techniques that we can use. And maybe uh, when I have more time and I've got the rootstock, I'll show some of the grafting techniques as well. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Uh, I always enjoy the feedback. And, and if, if, if you would and you give us a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. If you, if you think this video was of value, share it with your friends. That helps us out an awful lot as well. And I certainly appreciate your time watching the video. I will probably include some video, me getting up on the pergola, harvesting some of the grapevine, maybe doing a little bit of the pruning of the mulberry tree, and maybe harvesting some of these other ones as well. I'm not sure how much I can fit on the video. Thanks so much for watching, folks, and have a great day. Bye-bye now.
Thank you.